Hello everyone, uh, thanks for coming to today's uh, webinar. Um, first of all, I would like to know if uh, everyone can hear me correctly. Um, <clears throat> if not, you can um, drop me a line in the chat and we'll try to improve that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's uh, start with uh, today's webinar. My name is uh, Tino Vázquez and uh, I'm a consultant from C12G Labs. As you may know, it's the uh, company behind uh, Open Nebula. So today's webinar is going to be about um, Open Nebula for large scale deployments. Uh, large scale deployments are basically those um, those clouds with a large number of uh, physical resources with a large number also of uh, virtualized resources running on top. So there's some, um, some characteristics of these types of clouds that made them, make them different from, from normal small to mid-sized clouds. So today we're going to see uh, what are the possible bottlenecks in large-scale deployments and what are the features of Open Nebula uh, to, do, to deal with these uh, kinds of situations. Okay, so uh, let's start first with a brief introduction of uh, Open Nebula. So as you may know, Open Nebula is a virtualization manager, meaning it's, uh, it's a, a software, a middleware layer that it's able to um, virtualize a, a layer of physical resources in order to, to run uh, virtualized um, computing capacity on top of them. So it's a, it's a distributed manager of virtual machines, basically. And it's oriented, it's heavily oriented to, to data center virtualization. So as you can see in the figure, uh, with Open Nebula you can build um, different kind of clouds. So you can have Open Nebula virtualizing a set of uh, local resources for internal consume. That will be uh, a private cloud. We can also um, make Open Nebula outsource uh, capacity to external public cloud providers like Amazon EC2 and thus building a hybrid cloud. And uh, we can also activate, enable uh, some of the public uh, API interfaces for uh, us to give um, virtualization, to give virtual machines to, to external users and thus providing a, a public cloud. Okay, so these are the, the three different clouds that Open Nebula can be managing and uh, we are going to see how this um, uh, this managing differs if uh, the the number of resources is a small or mid size. Uh, how that compares of, with uh, managing a, a large scale cloud. Okay, so a bit more on um, Open Nebula. So some of the characteristics that define the the software is that it's open, so it's uh, released. Uh, using an Apache license. So it's a really unrestrictive license that even allows um, integrators to build cloud solutions out of uh, Open Nebula and, and sell that, that afterwards. It's um, really adaptable uh, due to its uh, flexible architecture and modular. Everything is uh, plugin oriented. So it's uh, it makes it easy to or easier to integrate uh, the Open Nebula software with, with other components like authorization components or other new hypervisors that are not supported out of the box. Uh, it's also a proven technology. So it's, it's a mature technology. It's been around for a while. It's been heavily tested uh, by, um, by uh, customers with uh, large scale deployments. I'm going to hear uh, customers and also uh, members of the community, of the Open Nebula community, 
like uh, CERN in Geneva, for instance, that uh, did some some stress testing to open Nebula. We'll see a bit more about that afterwards. Um, it does feature uh, open Nebula features a set of uh, of uh, characteristics that it makes it um, uh, powerful uh, at the task of managing um, virtual machines. We'll see some of them uh, in the course of this webinar. It's also uh, its choices of interfaces make it uh, interoperable because um, the choices are based on standards like the factor standards and also um, the Jure standards like OCCI or, or Amazon EC2. Um, it does feature uh, no vendor locking. Um, it's, uh, the philosophy is to give uh, support to as uh, many uh, hypervisors and, and different components as possible. So um, being it open source, uh, you can claim that Open Nebula doesn't fall into any vendor locking or using Open Nebula doesn't let you to fall in any. It's also very light. I mean, the core daemon doesn't require a lot of uh, resources to run properly. We'll see how this is uh, kind of important for, for large scale deployments as well. And it is enterprise ready due to the quality and assurance process that each release undergoes. At least the commercial version does. Okay, so let's see the characteristics of a, a typical small to, to mid size uh, deployment. So, in a um, typical scenario with um, a reduced number of hosts, I'm talking here uh, to something like up to 40 maybe physical hosts uh, running say 120 VMs or something like that, that would be uh, the limit for, for a, a mid-size deployment. Uh, you can keep a, a typical Penebula cloud architecture like the one we see in this picture. We can see there's just one front end uh, with access to an image repository, which uh, can even be the same server, but um, it does not really recommended. So we have here two servers, one acting as a front end, the other one acting as an image repository. And then we have a number of uh, nodes. As I said, it's, uh, this can be can scale up to 40 hosts or, or maybe a bit more if we, if we are really wise choosing the, um, the transfer technology, the storage technology, which by the way is uh, usually in our experience, the, the biggest bottleneck, that and the network. Okay, so um, up to a mid-size deployment, you can get an, a traditional architecture like this. Uh, you've got uh, your service hooked with um, with uh, maybe one gigabit Ethernet connection, and you use that to serve uh, the images and also to to let Open Nebula control the um, the physical hosts and also the the virtual machines via um, some maybe de dedicated. Um, network interface so you don't even need that if your if your cloud is it's small so um now we're going to see how how this um scale when you when you uh, start adding new hosts right so um this this um architecture cannot be kept indefinitely there's a number of hosts were that makes uh, the open nebula front end to to saturate being that uh, for um, network bandwidth, or, or even the um, the capacity of the of the server hosting the Open Nebula middleware, or uh, well, there's, a, there's a, a large number of bottlenecks that can be fall into. I mean, we'll see in this webinar how to overcome those uh, those um, bottlenecks and what are the features in Open Nebula that uh, can help at the time of um, doing large scale clouds. Okay, so let's let's start with it. <clears throat> so uh, first thing that uh, we should note is that uh, for each release, uh, there's um, um, a set of tests that are called the scalability tests that are run on the uh, Open Nebula um, Open Nebula software. 
So uh, we are talking here about uh, just the uh, the front end. So the Open Nebula Core Daemon, it's a stress test for scalability. So uh, it's released, it's certified with, uh, with uh, hundreds of uh, virtual machines and hundreds of physical hosts. They are, these are treated as as abstract resources. I mean, um, the, the tests are not run on real infrastructures, but rather uh, Open Nebula works with um, with dummy drivers that uh, in a way allows to simulate really big clouds. So that, that's, this just assure, assures that the um, on an ideal environment, Open Nebula is not going to crash and is able to handle uh, a big number of resources. Uh, for these uh, scalability tests and also to 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 hunt bugs that they may be in the in the open nebula demo like uh, deadlocks and nasty things like that uh, it's always very valuable the customer feedback I mean customers that are running open nebula in real production environments and they are um, really stressing open nebula in in, in the real life right so uh, one of the uh, the best uh, feedbacks that we've received so far it came from uh, CERN in Geneva that did the stress testing on over I think 500 uh, physical nodes and running I think something like 16,000 virtual machines. From from that experience, uh, we both both learned a lot. The Open Nebula team and also the uh, the CERN sysadmins and um, some of the of this really good feedback were incorporated in Open Nebula in the, in the shape of, of new features that we will see in this in in this afternoon morning for some. Um, so, what are the bottlenecks that can appear when when the number of hosts increases? Well, the most um, obvious one can be uh, the database. The database that Open Nebula uses to, to, to give um, persistency. So when the demo is restarted, no information is lost, is because it's stored into a database. If the number of resources that Open Nebula uses increases a lot, then the database can be a bottleneck. Um, there's some best practices uh, to overcome these uh, database uh, bottlenecks like um, using something like MySQL cluster or having a shadow copy of a Nebula uh, distributing the load balancing. And there's a um, C2G uh, white paper on scalability that, um, that talks a bit more about how to configure your database front end uh, for, for scalability. There's also uh, network and storage uh, bottlenecks when the number of connections increases for instance the network can be saturated also when there's um, a large number of requests um, for virtual machines for instance then maybe the storage backend can be overloaded and not um, making the whole cloud unresponsive um, also, the the issue of the capacity of the of the server that is running the Open Nebula software comes at stake. I mean, if the uh, uh, RAM or CPU is not enough to to move uh, all the resources that Open Nebula is managing, then we have another bottleneck appearing here. Um, so I think it's important to 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 note here that uh, we when we're talking about scalability, we should always look at the big picture, meaning that um, the front end can, has, can have uh, some, um, some bottlenecks, but uh, when we are talking about scalability, we're talking about uh, much more things, like it's not just the number of uh, physical servers, for instance, that increases, but also the users that want to, to take advantage of these servers, uh, the number of virtual machines also, um, and we have to take into account all, all these th different aspects, right? So I outlined here uh, four of them, but I'm sure there's uh, a lot more we can think of. So 
um, we're talking about scalability, we obviously are, are talking about a good um, configuration of the front end and also a good capacity of the, of the physical server. We are also talking about infrastructure characteristics that can turn into bottlenecks, like for instance, a, a, a not that good network connection between the worker nodes and the front end. We are also about talking about the uh, workload characteristics, like the, the virtual machine profiles. So at, in terms of scalability, it's not the same to have to deal with uh, VMs that are small or with VMs that are big in terms of uh, asked resources. So you can think about uh, VMs with um, a demand of uh, 64 gigs of RAM. Well, scaling that is much more difficult than scaling VMs with uh, much more modest uh, resource requests. And also it's important to, to, to be aware of the user's activity over time. If we are running our, our last uh, cloud, we have to be aware of uh, the possibility that at some point in time, all the users uh, will want to um, ask for the resources. I always see this like, like a metaphor for, for banks. If everyone goes to the bank and takes out uh, all the money, then the banks collapse. Well, if you're running a cloud, you may want to, to think about what would it mean for all the use uh, base of your cloud to, to make uh, a lot of requests at the same time. Okay, so with all of this in mind, uh, let's see what um, Open Nebula offers for, for large scale deployments. Um, Talking about the uh, the front end uh, configuration, there's uh, there's some things that can be done uh, in the in the Penebula daemon to to make it more scalable. So, for instance, the monitoring intervals can be adjusted. So, uh, Penebula is periodically uh, asking the, all the resources it's on, known about physical, both physical and virtual, like physical hosts and the virtual machines. What are your state of uh, memory consumption or, or CPU or just uh, if you are running or not? Um, all these um, all these uh, requests for 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 monitoring um, also incur in in network bandwidth usage. So um, making these intervals uh, longer will make the will reduce the network saturation. Obviously, it also also has a drawback. I mean, the um, the, the picture that Open Nebula has of the infrastructure status is going to be outdated uh, for longer time. So this it's always good to try and find a compromise between between the freshness of the information and the network saturation it can incur. Okay, there's some uh, other nice uh, hacks you can may say to 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 make uh, Open Nebula uh, be able to handle a large number of, uh, of resources. One of them is to duplicate the drivers. So Open Nebula uses uh, one driver for each, um, for each uh, technology it has to deal with. So for instance, there's one driver for, to deal with all the ESX, VMware ESX hypervisors. So um, these drivers are basically separated processes that process all the um, all the orders from Open Nebula and, and turn them into into real uh, hypervisors commands, right? So, what if I'm using just an ESX farm and I just have one process dealing with all of them? Well, it's it's gonna reduce the the chance of scalability of of, of that setup. So, one thing that can be done is to duplicate the drivers. So, Open Nebula will have a basically a set of drivers to deal with uh, the VMware ESX. So there's uh, a chance of uh, balancing the, the, the service, the operations between, between these different drivers. Um, another thing that can be done at the driver level is to change the number of threads and, and retry. So the number of threads is really interesting. By default, um, each process, uh, it's running, uh, 15 threads, so each, each uh, driver makes uh, 15 simultaneous connections to, to, the, um, to, the, to, the, to different servers, right? Um, 
depending on the capacity of the front end server, this number can be increased or decreased in order to make the cloud more responsive um, under, under stressful situations. This also requires a balance between the capacity of the front end and that of the infrastructure. As we talked before, the data, database should not be overlooked as well. Uh, C2G would recommend MySQL uh, for scalability. Uh, also installed in other machines aside from the front end. This is important to, to not to saturate the front end with uh, Open Nebula and MySQL operations. And also a second uh, MySQL server can be installed to provide backup and also load balancing. So uh, this would be uh, very useful to not to stress the MySQL server. And the last thing I want to mention today about uh, large scale uh, tricks for the Open Nebula front end is to multiplex the SSH connection. So when tradition in, in, in out of the box Open Nebula, uh, it has uh, three VMs say in one physical host, it will open three SSH connections to talk with all of them. But there's um, there's uh, nice tricks in the SSH uh, protocol that uh, can encapsulate all of these three petitions under uh, only one SSH stream. Um, this kind of uh, configuration is what m makes a difference between a, a large cloud that is responsive and one that is, is not that responsive. Okay, but <clears throat> unfortunately the front end is not the whole story. So from our experience, the front end has to, to watch out for what the next, but the infrastructure is the one that is posing the, 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 the biggest uh, challenges at the time of making a, a scalable cloud. So um, again, I want to stress that the feedback for users is, is, really, is really valuable for, for large scale deployments. And, um, especially for the infrastructure bottlenecks. It's something that is not that easy to, to reproduce if you don't have a, a large base of, of physical servers. So this feedback is being a strong driver of the roadmap in Open Nebula and allowed Open Nebula to have some large scale features to deal with uh, infrastructure bottlenecks like uh, storage distribution, also hardware capacity, and network bandwidth, which are one of the severest um, bottlenecks that the infrastructure can came up with. So what does Super Nebula have to offer for these um, infrastructure bottlenecks? Well, probably the most important one is the um, ability to have uh, multiple data stores. So uh, this is from Open Nebula 3.4 onwards. Um, the ability to, to manage different um, storage backends. So we can have, uh, instead of uh, just one, we can have a set of, um, of image servers or data stores, as uh, it's been called uh, from the 3.4 release, which are basically um, NAS or SAN or even servers um, that are storing the images that are going to be the, the foundation of the virtual machines. Uh, these images have to travel to the physical host uh, where the virtual machine is intended to be run on top of. So um, there's different um, mechanisms where this uh, uh, staging of images can be done. It can be done through uh, SSH or iSCSI or even distributed file systems like NFS or Lustre or EFS, which by the way, uh, it's very important to tune the distributed file system if we are using one in order to make a, a large scale cloud work in a responsive way. So the idea be behind having different uh, multiple data stores is to balance the, the input output operations of these image transfers. So we can think of having um, groups of servers uh, served by uh, a, a data store um, that will be, I mean, this, the VMs that are running in this uh, set of, um, of physical servers are not going to be disturbed by uh, 
VMs are going to be launched in another different set of, uh, of servers. So this is the idea, to isolate in order to, to um, guarantee, in a way, uh, some quality of service in, in, different, in different set of, uh, of hosts or clusters. So, as we see, clusters is also um, a feature in Open Nebula that <clears throat> allows to deal with, uh, with large-scale deployments. So, clusters are basically sets of hosts which share uh, uh, data stores and also um, networks configurations. So, basically, they are sets of hosts that are homogeneous in a way and uh, which are grouped in that way to 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 balance input and put operations are also network performance um, one thing that is interesting about clusters is that it can be used to serve different uh, profiles of virtual machines as we talked before there are there's different um, virtual machines in terms of capacity and also in terms of uh, needs of the virtual machine. So we can think about virtual machines that are going to perform um, non-interactive, uh, but data and CPU intensive um, um, operations. So uh, these virtual machines that don't need to, to launch very fast, but then they need to have, um, to have a lot of CPU resources. Well, then maybe that those VMs are are going to end up, they, they need to end up in a cluster that offers this kind of uh, hardware um, resources. So clusters are a way of, um, of grouping hosts with uh, similar characteristics in order to run VMs that can take advantage of these characteristics. So this allows us not to treat all the hosts in, at the same level, but to, to um, in a way ensure that uh, my VM is going to end up in the best place possible for for its attending out to its characteristics. Okay, um, some other feature that can be interesting for large scale deployments is um, the ability to manage different Open Nebula instances. So there's uh, obviously a limit on the number of hosts that uh, Open Nebula can manage at the same time, and that's roughly roughly a hundred of them to manage them properly with a good configuration. It, this number can can be increased with uh, tweaks, but, um, but I think a hundred is, is reasonable. A hundred uh, physical servers. Um, let me be the case for enterprises that want to to manage uh, more than this number or to want to manage. Um, set of hardware that are not located in the same administrative domain. So in this case, um, the necessity of having more than one instance of Open Nebula, it, it's clear. And also the necessity of uh, having a centralized way of managing all those resources, because at the end of the day, they are belonging to the same enterprise. So for that, Open Nebula um, gives the uh, Open Nebula zone server which is um, basically a manager of Open Nebula instances. It is accessible through a graphical user interface and also some command line interface and gives an aggregated view of all the resources that are running um, in the same enterprise, even though they may be scattered in data centers all, all around the world. So this um, makes a good case of uh, the scalability of uh, an Open Nebula cloud. It can scale across administrative domains. Um, very related to this is the concept of virtual data center. So a virtual data center, uh, it's, a, it's a way to isolate a um, set of uh, hosts that can, can, that can be um, in the same uh, cluster, can be a subset of uh, that cluster, in order to be given to a, to a community, to a set of users. So this, um, this isolation uh, deals with the uh, scalability of uh, users and organizations. So in an enterprise, uh, you may have uh, 
different um, different departments, different set of users, even external users. And um, how do you deal with uh, with that in um, in a virtualized environment? Well, you you need things like permissions, ACLs. But something that can really uh, make your life a lot easier is the concept of virtual data center, which is basically a set of resources that are given in a completely transparent way to the end user, which uh, he doesn't or she doesn't even know where the um, his virtual machine or her virtual machine is running, and he or she doesn't care really. Okay, so another one, the last. Um, the last aspect of Open Nebula that I wanted to talk today that uh, really aids in large-scale deployments is the uh, ability to, to build hybrid clouds. With hybrid cloud, which is basically a private cloud with a connection to an external cloud provider to outload, to I mean, to outsource uh, workload on peak demands, um, we can make a cloud posting, which is basically if we have a a moment in time where our local infrastructure cannot cope with the uh, with the demands of the users, then Open Nebula has the ability to outsource these uh, virtual machines to a public external service like Amazon EC2. Uh, this ability to to meet peak and fluctuating demands it's key at the time of making a large scale cloud that that works. Okay, so. That's basically uh, that's basically the features that I wanted to show today for large scale deployments in Open Nebula. I hope you um, I hope you uh, took a a glimpse of what are the uh, difficulties and the bottlenecks and the challenges at the time of building big clouds. Uh, you may be starting with pilot projects and small. Um, a small clouds in order to test different uh, virtualization environments, but um, it's I think it's always important to plan a bit ahead and think about what if this uh, pilot three or four servers cloud needs to grow to uh, another scale. Okay, so if you if you got a glimpse of that, then then I'm happy for today's webinar. Okay, so now it's the time. If you have any question, uh, please raise your hand or or type in to the chat. Well, thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. That goes to Ingo. So any other comment or question? Um, you may have noticed that um, there's a new beta release, the 3.6. I, I hope you every, everyone has the chance to, to try it out and don't miss out the um, opportunity to go to the uh, Pernebula marketplace, which um, is uh, an appliance marketplace for Pernebula, which is completely integrated with, um, with Pernebula Sandstone. Okay, so another question. Yes, actually, um, there is a certification process offered by C12G. So um, we offer certification of the front end and also of the infrastructure. I don't know if uh, you have uh, downloaded the, the service program guide. Uh, I encourage you to do so. If you have any, any doubts, you can write me or you can write to contact at c12g.com and we'll clarify your doubts about uh, the certification process.
Okay, any other questions? Well, thanks a lot for coming and uh, see you in the next webinar. Have a nice day.